Hi guys, welcome to another Divi theme video. This is Jamie from System22 and webdesignertechtips.com. We've got a fun one for you today. We're working with Divi5 again today. We're going to show you how to create a very simple but effective global footer for your Divi5 site. We've got important links here with some links to our home about services contact. We've got our little latest post popping up here. We've got links to our posts right here. And we embedded a Google map right here. Now you can really go to town with these things. I've kept it fairly simple today, but it's really easy to do. Let me show you how. To create a global footer, first thing we need to do is go down to the dashboard. I'm going to go down to Divi. I'm going to go down to Theme Builder. That's going to bring us to this page right here. And there's the global footer I've just built. I'm going to trash that and we'll start again. It saved it as a custom footer there. As we've deleted it, I'm gonna delete that as well. But what we can actually do, the difference between a custom footer and a global footer is a global footer is gonna appear on every single page. And a custom footer will only appear on the pages that you assign it. I'm gonna get rid of that as well. Great, so we created a custom body the other day for our posts. Today, we're gonna to go in this first column right here. I'm gonna go down to add global footer. I'm going to build a global footer. Great. When it first loads, it puts in a section and expects you to put in a row. Like I say, you can make this as complex as you want. I'm going to keep it fairly simple for mine today. So I'm going to add a new row. I'm going to put four columns in mine. Before I even put anything in there, I'm going to make the footer the color that I want it. I want a dark footer on my site. So I'm going to go into the section, blue tab. I'm going to go down a back from background always on the content there let's throw in a little gradient as what i did before i'm going to click on the blue right there i'm going to make that fairly dark gray something like that i'm going to click on the green over here and i'm going to make that a full black right down the bottom so we've got a dark gray going to a black there that's fine okay in my first column the first thing i want is an actual title in there so I'm going to add a little heading module. There we are right there. And I'm just going to call this one menu. Over here in heading, we can decide what we want to say there. I'm going to say menu. I'm going to make it a color that we can actually see and a size that I like as well. Don't want to put a link on this. Don't want to put a background on it. I'm going to go straight over to design. It's heading text. Don't want it to be a heading one. I'm going to make mine maybe a heading three. Let's make it a, a color that you can actually see. I'm going to just use a simple white for my headings up here. There we go. And it's still a little bit big for me. Let's make it perhaps 16. Hit the return. You can always change that at another time. Great. Well, we've got our heading in there. I'm just going to copy it a few times and put my other headings in these other columns right here. Three little dots there. I'm going to click on it. Duplicate heading. Left click on one, drag it across to here. This one, I think we had latest post. Obviously, whatever you've got for your part, title. And I want to try and spell things correctly. Quite often when I'm talking and typing, I get it wrong. And we're going to duplicate this one one more time. And again, just going to drag one of them across over here. This one was just posts. Get rid of the latest. And I'll have a list of maybe four posts. First one here, and then two, three, four here. And then the last one we had was a map. So I'll put location over there. Again, I'm going to duplicate this one. We'll drag it over. And this was where we put the map, so location. Great, so there's my little titles there. We can start adding a bit of content. Now for my menu, I only want the most important links. I'm going to do four pages for mine. Like I say, you can go to town and make as many as you want. So I'm going to add a new text module. A little plus to add a new module. And I'm going to make this one home. It's going to link to my home page here. Link down below. We can go up here. You can either copy your page link from your existing menu, or you can actually use dynamic 
by putting in page link up here. Then just select the page you want. I want the home page for mine today. I'll pop that in there and apply. Now let's make it the color and size that we actually want it. So we'll go down to text. I've got a crazy orange color I've been using for my text. So I'm going to put that in there by hitting pick a color. I'm just going to paste the hex code in here. Control V to paste. Click off of it. That's the color I want. But my text, well, I want it capitalized. I think that's going to work just like that. But when they hover over it, I'm going to have it change to white to indicate there's a link. We can do that very easy by going up to the top. A little desktop I type icon up here. If we left click on it, flip it to hover. For all of our settings, we can have a different one for hover by clicking on that. I'm going to make that white when they hover over it. Great. Let's flip that back to desktop. Left click on the little arrow, pop back to desktop. Fantastic. Okay, I want to add a little border on the bottom of this for to separate my little links right there. So I can close up text. We'll go down to border. I only want one on the bottom, so I'm going to select that one right there. I want it to be about a, just a simple one pixel border. You can see it right there. Again, I'm going to use that crazy orange color we had on that one. Great. Now I've got my first one in there. I'm going to rinse and repeat for how many I want. I want actually four. So again, I'm going to duplicate. And we'll do it one more time for as many times as we want it. And one more is going to do. And I'll show you about the spacing in a moment. So our second one here is going to go to our about page. So obviously we want to say about. We're going to link it. To the same page link, just going to go in there, hit page link, choose the about page, great, apply. Next one, services. I did actually try this by using the loop module and it did it quite well, but it got confused with the links as I was using a loop to put our little posts in over here for some reason. But this is a very easy way to do it too. And you know what we need to do, link it, page link services and the only pages that are going to show up here are the ones you've actually got published if you've got draft pages they will not show up here so make sure you've got published pages or you will not find anything here services apply and the last one i'm going to put in there is contact so i'll just say contact great now they're a little far apart for me we can adjust that hopefully with our flex if we go into the column itself that we're sitting in here, let's go into the row. We're working on column one. Design wise. Flex is already selected by default. We can change that gap. Let's maybe half it by perhaps 15. It's already got pixels on the end. And if you want to adjust that line height there, we can go into any one of these modules. Go into design where we put in our text there. We can go down to line height. If you want more space, increment up. It'll give you more space between the actual modules there. If you want less space, increment down. I was fairly happy with the way it was. Let's just hit the little reset. Great. Now in my next column, I had the latest post. I use a little post slider module for that. Here's a post slider right here. It makes it a little bit large there. So I want to select the category that I want to display my latest post from, which would be supercars, because that's all I want. I only want one post. I don't want it to slide. I want it to be the latest post. It is set date new to old. So your latest post will automatically display here. I don't want to have a button in there. I'm going to go down. I don't really want to have an excerpt in there. It's just taking up too much space. I really don't want the button or the meta, really. I just want the title. I'm going to shrink that down a bit. So it's more in line with the size of our little menu items there. So if we roll down to elements here, we can turn a lot of these things off. Don't want any arrows. Don't want any controls. Don't want to read more button. Don't want the metadata. Just want that. And I'm going to make it quite a bit smaller. Now we know this is the title text. So if we pop over to design, title text, H2, 
Again, let's make it perhaps an H3. I think that's probably going to work just like that. And the actual size I want, I don't want it much bigger than our menu items here or even a similar size. So I'm going to give it about 150 pixels. I think that's what I used before. That's a guess. So still in the post slide, I'm going to go down to sizing, down to height down here. I'm going to type in 150px. You want to make sure you put in pixels. It may try and put in percentage otherwise. And hit return. I think that's going to work. Obviously adjust to taste. Okay. Next all of that, I had something similar to this, just displaying our next four posts right here. So I'm going to copy one of these. Let's just do the bottom one here. Again, duplicate text. I'm going to drag it over again, just left click anywhere on it, drag it under my post right here. Okay, this time I'm going to go in and for my actual content, we're going to change it and we're going to loop it. So once we're in this module, I'm going to go down to loop down here. I'm going to hit loop element. <laughs> it's looped it 10 times, as you can see there. I only want one, two, three, four. So let's roll down four and hit the return key. Great. What do I want in there? Well, I want posts. So post types fine. Posts is fine. Select the category of supercars. Now roll down just a little bit. I want to offset by one because that's going to be our latest post. So let's just offset by one. So this goes to the next available post. Now to actually add the content in here, we want to go into our module itself. Doesn't matter which one of these you go into, we're in it at the moment. We want to go to content. Under the text, all I want in there is basically the title. So I'm going to go up to our little disk type icon, insert dynamic content, loop post title. That's what I want in there. And there we have it. We've got four of those. Now let's go in and adjust this column so it's a similar size to this one. We can just go up to the top here and there's the column it's sitting in right there. All we need to do is go to design layout flex is already selected. And again, I'm going to change that vertical gap to what we had. I think, did we use 15? That's about right. And if you want to, you can use your space between to even things out here. Let's do the same for this column over here. We just go into one of the modules again. We can just go up to the top of the column there. Layout. Yeah, let's use space between for that. That way, they're both the similar size. What it's doing is it's putting equal space. We've got the same amount there and spacing them out. If you had different amounts, it would still do it, but you'd have different amounts there. And finally, we just added a little Google map over here so people could find us. And again, we're not going to use an API key. We're just going to embed a straight live Google map. To do that, let's add a code module. I'm going to hit the little plus. I'm going to add a little code module right there. Now I'm going to go to Google Maps. I've got the White House here. Just type in whatever address you want for your map. Obviously your business address, I should imagine. Now we want to embed this. Sometimes there's a tab here that lets you embed it. If you don't see it, hit the little hamburger type menu on the left hand side. We can go down to share or embed map. That'll pop this up. I want to embed it. When you hit that, it's going to put some HTML code up here. Zoom into where you want it on the outside map here. Obviously before you do this, I'm happy with what we've got there. When you're happy, copy the HTML. I'm going to go back to my theme builder. Here's my code module. Put my cursor in there and paste that code in there. Control V to paste. As you can see, it's popped it in there. Now, remember we gave this 150 height. I don't want this to be any larger than 150 or else it's going to make our menu look crazy like this. Or our footer, I should say. Very easy to do. We just got to change one little line of code on our iframe here. If we look down, we've got width here of 600. That's actually pixels, but it hasn't got 600, so it's filling as much as it can. But next door to that, we've got height, which is 450, which is way too much for me. I'm going to change the 450 to 150 like we had for our little slider over here, just to tidy everything up. I'm just going to put a one in there. Make sure you don't cut off those inverted commas either side of that. It will not work. And there we have it. We've got our little live Google map embedded in there.
Okay, before we check this out on the front end, when I put this loop in just now, I didn't actually add the links. So these links are actually still going to go to the home page link. So if we go into any one of these, go down the link where we put in our home page link, or and get rid of that. Just hit the return right there. And this will do all of them. You don't have to do these individually. I'm going to put a dynamic link in. Loop link. That way, each of these will go to the specific post. Now, it looks great on the back end. This does. I must admit, last time I did this, I had it display a bit of the excerpt there, which didn't work very well. Uh, if that happens, I'll show you how to fix it in a moment. Let's just apply this. We'll save our changes now. We'll exit. Make sure everything's saved on this page. Let's close that down and open a fresh version. I'm going to visit the site. I'm going to middle mouse button so it opens in a new tab. Roll on down to the bottom. There it is. That's going to take us to our home about services contact page. We've got individual links. There it is. What I was saying, we've got a little problem here with the metadata and title. It's probably the excerpt. I'll show you how to get rid of that in a moment. And these should take us to our individual posts. Well, let's try one. There we go, the Ethereum, perfect. And this is a live Google map. And if you click on it, it's gonna take you to the live version of it right here. Fantastic, so let's see if we can't fix this right here. I don't want that writing in there, just want the title. So if we go back to our theme builder there, go back in there, here's our little post slider. You can see on the back end, it looks absolutely fine. If we go in there, I've got use post excerpt switched off, but we're still seeing a little bit. Elements, they're all switched off there. So if I go back into my content there, roll down. Although we've got this switched off, let's put a zero in where it says excerpt link. Zero. And we'll save again. We'll exit. Make sure everything's saved on this page. Let's just refresh this page and see what happens. That's better. That's actually got rid of it. Shouldn't need to do that. Maybe a little bug. Like I say, we're still in the alpha version of this, and I'm sure that'll be fixed, but that's a workaround if you're already making sites with Divi 5. That seems to work perfectly now. And that should take us to that post. Perfect. So there you go, guys. There's how to create a very easy global footer using the Divi theme. Remember, global footer will turn up on every single page. Custom footer you can assign to specific pages and posts. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. Like I keep mentioning, we're working with Divi 5 at the moment. It's in the alpha stage. We're getting closer and closer to the full release. You can use it and you can build new websites with it. I've done a few. But I'm not using it for my clients just yet. And I will not be migrating my Divi 4 sites to Divi 5 until just after the first release, probably till the first update after the final release. But it's fine for building scratch sites. I've done a lot of them and I'll keep doing these demos. Now, if somebody's still building with Divi 4 and it's a fantastic platform still and still works perfectly, and there's something you're struggling with and you want a video about it, let me know down below. I'll do my best to explain it or make a demo video if I can. So once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.